Hey guys, this is James. Um, I've got some exciting news for you. Um, I have successfully written a little 100 line bit of code that can grab stuff from the real sense. I haven't gotten playback to work yet, but you can use the PCL viewer to look at the files and uh, it works pretty well. And today, um, now that I've got it all finished and I've, I've not met any progress on anything else, I want to go ahead and update you on um, where we're at, what we need to do, and kind of show you how to work with the stuff that I'm giving you. Um, as well as address just some general object segmentation, PCL library issues. Um, so this is what I pushed to GitHub. Uh, we've got two files. One is a folder called Noisy, and it's uh, basically just got a bunch of these test PCD files that I, sorry, that I captured, um, and shows that if you don't filter out extraneous outline points, uh, just how many there are and how ridiculous they are. Uh, and then I, uh, after some range filtering, I uh, managed to get a very successful capture of some different images uh, or some different clouds, if you will. And uh, we're going to go through them and kind of look at them and see what's up. And uh, I also made a CMake file that can uh, build a project that uses both PCL and the lib real sense library, uh, which actually took me way longer than I thought it would. Um, it's not that complicated, but uh, well, I should say this. I know more about CMake and QMake than I used to. I won't go into too much detail into this because now that you have it, and it's here, you cannot care. And that's perfect, right? Um, and then my little 110 lines of code uh, that managed to do this is right here. Um, let's, I don't want to go in this too deeply because of time and also because uh, now that it's done, we don't care about the real sense anymore as, as just as far as, you know, what we need to do to make a profile for it and to wrap it up into our final project. Um, speaking of which I, I should mention that this CMake is very Linux specific and you need to change out the directory that you installed your liberal resense in uh, lib real sense in uh, in here, I just recommend putting in your root. That'll work just fine. And we're also using this uh, shared library that the make file included with LibRealSense creates. So just, just quick, uh, get that out of the way. Um, back to main. Uh, I'll just segment this code really quickly. Um, the comments are there. I think they're pretty good. Uh, and we'll just talk about it real quick. Um, this first section up here is exactly the same as um, if I go into my virtual box and show you the CPP tutorial three point cloud. Um, it's basically the same as up here, except with all the GL, GLFW stuff pulled out. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, back to here uh, so this is all from the uh, lib real sense tutorial and uh, then I got this code right here all of that all the way down to here I pretty much studied um, an example using the RealSense SDK that someone had put out. I, I uh, forget the name and the project, but I'll put up a link for it. You guys don't have to worry about it too much. Um, 
he was using the SDK, uh, and Libreal Sense is very different from that, so it was just uh, a matter of understanding what he had written and understanding what um, uh, the the replacements in the Libreal Sense library were. Um, so it actually wasn't wasn't that bad because I I really like Lib Real Sense library as far as usability goes over the the uh, Real Sense SDK that's just got all sorts of weird nomenclature. I think I can I can show you an example if I go up here. Um, no, I've lost it. This is just my work that I've been. I'm doing on here oh yeah uh it would be this one right here so you see this this weirdly named 3d point type right here and it's got all sorts of information it's got your global identifier in the real sense library called pxc uh and i believe that stands for uh, perceptual computing which is the group in intel that this came out of and um in the lib real sense library it's this the equivalent of this is just float three as in a float that's got three different floats inside of it like it's just intuitive and much easier and and it's just so much better and and i'm just using that as an example to show that uh the lib real sense library um is a lot more user-friendly and intuitive although a lot less powerful than the real sense sdk uh, okay, back to the code. We'll get into that stuff in a minute. Um, if there's anything I want to point out, it's uh, we've got some interesting stuff going on here. I added this in to filter out of noisy data. And uh, I guess I'll talk about that real quick. Um, this is what noisy data looks like capturing from the real sense. And I'll just zoom in on that right there. Um, you see we've got all of these weird outlying points all over the place. And, like, if you take that and compare it to, like, this, it's the same scale. You've just got all this extra information here. So it's harder to understand what you're looking at, and it's more to process. So basically, in the code, I said, um basically anything that's farther than 1.5 meters away don't record that put it as a nan uh, which i do right down here and i check that right here and you can see i just set it all to nan um and that's pretty useful um that really cleaned up the file a lot and uh just generally helped process it as well got rid of a lot of points um and I, I think I, I should also point out that it's definitely noise, right? Like, look at this right there. And, and this is in meters. I want to I wanna point that out. This is in meters. So when we're getting this data in, there's, there's a lot of outlying stuff, and it can really make the, uh, the, the file hard to read. And this is, this is obviously our z-axis, as in distance away. Typically, a lot of the data we got out was between 0.5 and 3. Um, you can see this is where I took the image of in my apartment. And um, I basically just set up two tables and collected a bunch of cylindrical objects because that's the slice we're focusing on and represented the two different uh, surfaces and, of course, there's our real sense buddy um and what we got out of this um as our raw data is this guy and uh, i just want to map it out here because it got flipped around we can play around with how this is is viewable but um i just want to note that this area right here correlates to this area right here and uh all of these pcd files are up online um out on the github this is what i was showing you earlier uh and conversely that is this over here some things to note about this is 
the black table oh man it actually did absorb all that infrared light go figure this managed to reflect back reflect back rather well conversely here a water bottle i thought it was pretty opaque but obviously not that opaque and i cut the coffee filter out but in the bigger image i might show you that later it's uh it's not even there in fact i'll, I'll just go ahead and show that to you right now so this is the image and it might be cut out but you can see this is that area over there and it's just really dark really really dark there's not that many coins oh god what have i done um yeah so you get my point um oh. so um i'll get into that down later um so as far as the code goes basically all this is doing is mapping from what real sense gives us out to what pcd format wants and pcd format is really flexible um you can format it to be a bunch of different things and if you look at the pcd format tutorial on the PC P pcl library you'll see that um another thing that i want to note is this equation right here uh this is how we basically go through and go through our y data points and then our x data points or indices i should say uh indexes uh indices indexes and eh, it doesn't matter um and basically we go through here and we use that that and plus these intrinsic height and width information specifically width uh to um basically go through all the different possibilities um go through each point that p the point cloud that uh the real sense sends out to me into the point cloud over there and they're very similarly formatted and i have a se sneaking suspicion that we might be able to just cast it but uh and save ourselves a lot of processing it's not that much processing but i mean it's you know for 640 by 480 here i'll show you you know if, if we go at 640 by 480 that gives us 300,000 points um and uh if we could not have to go through each one of those points just to put it over in the pcl format pcd format that'd be great right and we'll work on it but this is the way that i've seen it done and so we used it um other notes about the code uh this is not working yet our viewer it's still showing up this weird error uh but you can use pcl viewer to do it just fine um and all of these pcl files i'm saving and the ascii format um so ascii format which is what enables us to look at the data and debug it um like this right here this is in ascii format and basically you can just look at the different points and see what their actual values are in meters and it's much more useful than the binary method but uh it doesn't deal with color as well or, or it doesn't deal with floating point numbers as well um i'm not sure i really understand but that's what the documentation says um so basically that's the code um you've got a bunch of different 10 different um shots of this they're all pretty much from the same angle but um there was a a low success rate i just thought i would upload it all you can go through and look at them and choose the one you want I, i'm not sure if it matters there might be some bad ones in there um uh, running it through virtual box really slows things down a lot so sometimes there was timeouts and, and, and the weird stuff 
Anyways, uh, I want to talk about next um, what we're going to do uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. and hopefully get some object segmentation done. Um, if you can see here, uh, this is the extract indices example that was on um, the PCL tutorials site, and you can see how great the reduction in points is. So you can see it's right there, and um, it even makes this shape more defined. Uh, looks a bit more like it should. Um, I mean, this this image right here, it's still useless. There's still not enough data to do anything about it, but still it's much easier to work with. It's a significantly fewer points. And then using the ransack on that uh, extracts everything but the plane. And um, I think that's pretty good. Um, like definitely it did a good job of that. I don't see any remaining points from the cylinders that I put onto the tabletop. Uh, and I think this could really honestly work. Uh, this is actually from the wrong angle. It should be flipped around. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is upside down. Um, let, me, let me illustrate that real quick. Uh, by going to... This is how it should look right here. And uh, the way it was before was like that or something. But this is the. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. So this area is the top, and this is what was left behind the shadows of the objects. Um, and I believe what we can do is we can uh, go into the, I just copied and pasted the um, example for the indices example in here. And uh, it looks pretty good. Um, I think what we can do is instead of using all of these, um, let me just not use the pen instead of using these extract methods to get it out, instead of extracting out the plane, we, or, or extracting out what's not the plane, maybe we extract the plane out, and, or, uh, and then use some sort of segmentation, um, or color all those points in and separate them into separate segments and uh, map that to the real world somehow. I think tomorrow if we manage to, to just get a visual of just the containers or apply special color to the cylinders that are on the surface, that would be sufficient. Um... Anyways, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. I just wanted to give you guys a head up of my train of thought. And uh, we'll look at this code and we'll get form more familiar with it. I definitely think that this is the right way to go. Um, but certainly we can look at some of the other tutorials. There were several interesting ones, uh, including one that was for cylinder object recognition. And maybe we can combine these two somehow into one beautiful thing and, and figure it out. Um, so anyways, 4 p.m. tomorrow, February 10th, um, Wednesday, 4 p.m. It's going to happen. It's going to be great. Uh, is there anything else? I think that pretty much covers everything I want. Uh, so again, oh, um, as far as opening up these PCD files in, um, in a project, it's really easy. Like I just, you know, it's this one line of code or two lines. PCD reader, read, read, reader, read. 
and uh, Rider can be a little bit more complicated, but it's it's not that bad. It doesn't look like it, um, but it shouldn't it shouldn't take us too long to figure that out. And it shouldn't, guys. Like if I gave you guys a sample piece project where you could just start copying and pasting things in, I don't think that would really buy you anything. Um, you can just figure out how to make a new project, and uh, you don't have to use the Real Sense library at all. Um, and if we, tomorrow, if you guys want, we can take some more sample pictures using the real sense camera, um, of different objects, of different situations, of different floors, so on and so on. Um, and maybe we can work on enabling color capture as well. Um, but, you know, uh, there we are. Um, all right, have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow and goodbye.